Let's look at topic five, professional law. The previous topic, topic four, law for professional practice, also discussed law. So how's this topic different? Topic four was more about the types of law, contract, tort, international, civil code, and so on. Topic five, professional law, is about the law or structure of how professionals are regulated, how they get into the profession, what work they can legally do, and what titles they can use. This topic also looks at the law as it relates to non-professionals who use protected titles, or perform services they are not permitted to. We've chosen to visualize this topic using high-poly artwork to help make complex legal concepts and scenarios more engaging and easier to understand. Let's look at topic 5.1, the acts, regulations, and bylaws of provincial and territorial acts. Some of these topics were discussed back in presentation one, but they are repeated here, so we'll talk about them again. Provincial and territorial associations derive their authority to license and self-regulate the engineering and geoscience profession from the provincial or territorial government legislation. These associations enforce the legislation by requiring members to adhere to regulations, bylaws, and a code of ethics. Regulations grant them the power to discipline members and prevent the misuse of protected titles and services by non-members. While they cannot directly govern non-members, they can initiate legal action, including court proceedings, to enforce compliance. These associations oversee engineering and geoscience activities within their province or territory. Engineers working outside their licensed area must obtain the necessary license or permit for the new region or collaborate with a licensed company. The acts, regulations, and other laws help to guide the member behavior and establish operation of the body or association. The acts define professional engineering practice, prohibits unlicensed use of reserve titles, and authorize the associations to license practitioners, set standards, investigate complaints, and discipline members. It establishes the the association's core regulatory mandate. Regulations provide more detailed rules under the Act's authority covering areas like academic requirements for licensure and performance standards for professional engineers. They allow for specific requirements to be adapted as needed. Complementing the Professional Engineers or Geoscience Act and regulations, associations operate under its own set of bylaws that provide more granular rules and procedures for governing the organization's regulatory activities. These bylaws, made under the authority of the Act, cover areas such as defining roles and responsibilities, member requirements, complaints and discipline processes, elections, and operational matters. Once licensed, you have the right to use your engineering or geoscience title, for instance, a PNG or PGO, within the guidelines of your association. This is a significant benefit because you've met all the licensing requirements, and now you can do more with the title in terms of billing more for your time and providing more services to your clients. People who don't have a license cannot use a title which is enforceable by law in Canada. It is up to the association to protect and enforce the proper use of titles. Engineering can be defined as the design, fabrication, and construction of human solutions which rest on the knowledge and proper use of engineering and scientific principles. Geoscience can be defined as a science that puts to use a scientific method to predict, investigate, map, and model the Earth's natural system behavior. As for the scope of practice, each association in Canada defines what professionals do 
to give its members the advantage of performing those services while non-members can be sued if they practice engineering or geoscience without holding a proper license. As for the individual professional, it is their responsibility to be aware of their ability and how broad or narrow their scope of practice is. Practicing outside of one's area of expertise can lead to negligence. Often professionals are unsure whether a particular task falls within their scope of practice. When faced with such a situation, three common actions are, number one, you can turn down the work. Number two, you can partner with someone who has the skills to perform the work. And number three, get training and education to improve your skill set so that you can take on the work. Have you ever been asked to do something outside of your area of expertise? How did you handle it? Engineers Canada and Geoscientists Canada promote consistency in licensing and regulation for the provincial and territorial associations across Canada. They publish non-binding policies, guidelines, and position statements. Both organizations evaluate and provide accreditation for undergraduate programs. Lastly, they develop national guidelines for registration and licensing in an attempt to make it consistent across Canada. Let's now dig into the topic on admission to the professions. Licensure refers to a process of obtaining a license in a regulated profession like engineering or geoscience. Going through this process is required to practice engineering or geoscience and use the protected titles like PNG or PGOF. The licensing process ensures professionals meet established standards of education, experience, and ethical conduct to safeguard the public. The licensing process ensures professionals meet established standards of education, experience, and ethical conduct to safeguard public interest. Basic requirements across all jurisdictions in Canada must be met by anyone seeking a license. Requirements include four years of relevant experience, except Quebec where only three years is needed, completion of an accredited Canadian engineering university degree or equivalent. A law ethics and professional practice exam must be passed by all applicants. This exam tests the knowledge of those topics as well as a language proficiency. Technical exams may also be assigned based on the applicant's education or experience. Interprovincial mobility is outlined in the Canadian Free Trade Agreement and facilitates the movement of professionals across provincial or territorial borders in Canada. These agreements negotiated between regulatory bodies and governments allow professionals licensed in one province or territory to practice in another without significant additional requirements. The applicant will need to ensure they have no criminal convictions and are in good standing, which means their dues are up to date and they're not under investigation for anything. Interprovincial mobility helps the professional move their license to another province, hold multiple licenses in different provinces, or obtain a limited license when working for a short duration in another province. International mobility agreements facilitate the movement of engineers between Canadian or other countries by providing a streamlined process for licensing and recognition of qualifications. The Washington Accord, established in 1989 and consisting of around 20 countries, is an international agreement facilitating the mobility of professional engineers and geoscientists across borders. This agreement which Canada is a part of, helps to recognize the academic requirements of those graduated from accredited engineering degree programs. 
This can help reduce some of the licensing steps when an engineer is looking to relocate. Before we talk about licensing of corporations, let's first distinguish between corporations, consultants, and firms. A corporation is a legal entity separate from its owners. It can engage in lawful business activity, including professional engineering or geoscience services. Consultants are individual experts who provide advisory services in their area of expertise. They can work independently or be employed by a consulting firm. And firms provide professional services in specific engineering or geoscience areas. Examples are utility design or geophysics. Firms are often structured as partnerships owned by multiple partners. A permit to practice or certificate of authorization allows the regulatory bodies to govern the activities of entities providing these professional services. The requirements typically include designated a licensed professional to take responsibility for the entity, carrying liability insurance, and complying with relevant laws and codes. The terminology differs slightly across provinces. Some use permit to practice while others use certificate of authorization. 